start. All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the Hour of Devastation full set review. We're going to be going through all of the white cards first, and with me getting through is Anthony again. How are you going, Anthony? Yeah, good, Brett. How are you doing? Pretty good. Good to be back in for Hour of Devastation. You ready for everything to get wrecked? Yeah, let's blow some stuff up. <laughs> all right, so let's move to our first card. Kicking us off is a combat trick, Act of Heroism. So this is one white for an instant. Untapped target creature, he gets plus two, plus two, and can block an additional creature in this turn. Uh, so, pretty good little combat trick. Uh, the untap is really good for Exert, obviously. So, I'm pretty happy to play this card. Yeah, this is a pretty good one. Uh, I think it's a bit of an upgrade on a lot of the ones from Amonkhet. Uh, plus two, plus two, and untap is pretty big game, and the blocking an additional creature is just kind of neat bonus. So, yeah. I mean, this is occupies the same sort of space as like Mighty Leap. Um, Mighty Leap yeah. lets you get through, I guess. It had a bit more versatility in that way, but I think the untap is probably more valuable. Yeah, I think so. I think it, generally this is going to be a lot better. And, you know, the blocking an additional creature can, you know, save a turn of blocking on, and stuff like that. Yeah, can sure. be really handy. Alright, so not bad. Worth playing, but uh, not too high of a pick, I would say, for Limited. Yeah, you'll play it, but yeah. Good stuff. All right, so let's roll into our next one, the rare. You want to tell us about this cat? Oh, this cat's awesome. Uh, Dawn Pouncer, one and a white for a 1-1 one, one cat. It has Double Strike and Eternalize. So Eternalize is a bit like Embalm, except instead of getting the same stats as the original card, it has it becomes a 4-4. So you internalize, uh, Eternalize it uh, for 5 mana, and you get a 4-4 Double Strike. This card's sick. That's a real scary kitty cat, uh, and a much pretty version is the, uh, I believe this is the top eight uh, for game day, so. Yeah, that's that's going to be a sweet foil. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah, so a, a good little card, and, and white in its sort of aggressive tilt, I can definitely see this being good and high pick and limited. Yeah, I mean, um, it's pretty much a 2-2, um, and then it becomes a absolute beating late in the game. Excellent aggressive cards to kick us off in white. Yep, sweet one. Uh, the next one, another bomb rare here, is the Angel of Condemnation. Uh, so this is two white white for a flying and vigilance 3-3 three, three angel. Uh, it has two abilities, two and a white to tap, exile another target creature, return to cut to the battlefield at the end of the next turn, or at the end of this turn. And uh, same cost, two and a white, exert it, and you exile it permanently until the angel uh, leaves the battlefield. So it's kind of like a banisher priest type effect. Yeah, this card is sweet. Um, it's a mini Sarah Angel, one off the cost, one off power toughness, and then it's got these super good abilities. Um, just getting something out of the way for a turn, or you can exert it to um, oblivion ring a creature, pretty much. Uh, Card's bonkers. Oh, it's, it's really brutal. Um, I mean, you have to be a little bit careful, I guess, if it does get removed, all of the things come back. So if you've used it a couple of times, it might be a little bit problematic. But Yeah, it's something to watch out for, but if you can just get their field after, over a few turns, it's... <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> Absolutely, and in a world with eternalized tokens, that first ability is just going to get rid of them. Like You don't even have to go to the exert to get rid of those tokens. Yeah, exactly. And you, the other option with that is that you can just get rid of something for um, just a turn at a time, and it can still attack. So it's just yep. does everything. It's awesome. Yeah, big white bomb. Definitely want to pick this early and put it in all of the white decks. Yeah. Another angel, uh, somewhat less exciting, is the Angel of the God Pharaoh. This is uh, four white white, so six mana for a four four with flying and cycling for two. Yeah, this one's a bit less exciting. Uh, the white cards are... Well, generally white's been really aggressive, so the big flyers haven't been as good. They seem to get a spot, but it's not something you're prioritizing. 4-4 uh, is definitely better than the 3-3 three, three from Armanket, but you'll just pick these up a bit later, I think. Yeah, the Winged Shepherd was fine. I think that was a common in Armanket, so this is an uncommon, yeah. slightly uh, upgraded, but... Uh... Yeah, it, it's okay. If you really need a curve topper, I can see playing this. Yeah, I mean, 4-4 four, four for, four, four fly for 6 is usually a good rate, so it, you can't be too down on it, but it's just not what white wants to do. Not really. Alright. 
How about this uh, bird cleric? Is this any better? Yeah, I actually think I like this one a little bit better. Um, four and a white for a 3-3 three, three flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Uh, just, the, just because of the life gain and being one cheaper, it just makes a world of difference in this format. I think it's going to be really aggressive. Um, so, yeah, just being cheaper is just so much better. Yeah, and a good body helps you sort of win in that race by gaining some life. I think it could be, this could uh, do some good work in an ag aggressive white deck. Yeah. All right. So we, we got a horse. This is uh, one of very few horses in Magic, the Crested Sun Mare. Three white white for a Mythic 5-5. Five five. It has other creatures you control have Indestructible. And at the beginning of each end step, if you gained life this turn, you get a 5-5 five five white horse creature. So you get a copy, kind of. Yeah, so it makes all your guys that you get off this um, Indestructible, which is sweet, I guess. Um, this card is insane, really. Like, you only really need to get one token for it to be really good. Mm -hmm. um, and if I've got this in my deck, I'm just jamming as many life gain effects as I can. Card's awesome. Yeah, the fact that you do have to gain life in the turn in order to get that to work is a little bit awkward. Um, there aren't you know, a whole heap of ways to do that in Limited, but there are enough, certainly, and particularly in green and white, you've got Life Goes On and, and a few other bits and pieces that'll do it. Uh, renewed faith if you can cycle renewed faith um, at yeah. end step that sort of thing um, the, the key will be doing this at instant speed um, so that you can attack with it the following turn yeah you yeah you want a surprise attacker I guess but or a su surprise blocker would be sweet as well um, actually no you can't get a surprise blocker can you no it happens at end step yeah, yeah so uh, the card's just bonkers like take it play it's going to be awesome i don't think there are many horses though going around so edh isn't going to really have a horse tribal deck is it no this is not the horse lord we were all hoping for <laughs> all right tell me about this dauntless avon i think uh, this could be interesting yeah this is i think uh a front runner for one of the best white commons um dauntless avon is two and a white for a two one bird warrior with flying and when it attacks, untap target creature you control. So the obvious one is Exert. Um, but even though it's obvious, that's still really powerful. Um, Exert um, is a big drawback when you're attacking and buffing it up. Um, but it was still great in Armanket Limited. And now it's not even a, a cost if you've got one of these on the field attacking as well. This card's going to be absurd, I think. Oh, for sure. Exert was just really powerful in, in Armin Kent, and you had to take a turn off every other turn to, to use it. Now you don't even have to have that cost, so this is going to be a very powerful card uh, if it's allowed to survive and get in a couple of turns. Yeah, yeah. Just looking through the spoiler earlier today, and I just think this is going to be, like, unreal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah pick this one early because it's not going to come back. No, nah, no way. Uh, so next we have Desert's Hold. So this is two and a white for an enchant aura. You enchant a creature. If you have a desert in play or in your graveyard, you gain three life. But the main point of this card is that uh, the enchanted creature can't attack, block, or use any of its abilities. So it's a uh, super pacifism, locks down that creature, uh, and it can't really do anything. Yeah, um, don't get tricked by the desert text here if you don't have any deserts this is still serviceable well, not even serviceable this is excellent uh, it's an arrest um, it's going to take the creature out and yeah you can't really ask much more from a removal spell splash it and play it and yeah just pick it high it's good absolutely yeah premium removal play in white pick it first pick if you need to it's a good card yeah Disposal Mummy. Now, this guy is pretty brutal. Yeah, uh, two and a white for a 2-3 Zombie Jackal. Uh, when Disposal Mummy enters the battlefield, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. So, I mean, this is... The brutal part of this is him just throwing stuff into the fire <laughs> thing behind him. Um, that's kind of crazy. Um, so he's throwing the dead into the fire, which is kind of cool with the flavor and all that. Um but otherwise, this is just filler for your limited decks. Um, the ability is kind of medium, or not even that good. And the stats yeah. are... 
the ability doesn't really mean anything unless your opponent is playing some pretty heavy Eternalize and that sort of stuff or Embalm. Um, there's not that much from the graveyards that are important other than that, so... Yeah, it's yeah. Just, just fine as a 2 man, a 3 mana, 2-3. Play it if you need a card at 3. It's a zombie, so that's something. The wide zombie decks will want it. Yeah, zombies is relevant, certainly. Yeah. Alright, Jeru with his eyes open. Uh, 3 white white for a 4-3 with Vigilance. Uh, so not too bad, legendary creature, human warrior. Uh, when he enters the battlefield though, you may search your library for a planeswalker card, reveal it and put it into your hand. Uh, and if a source would deal damage to a planeswalker, you control prevent one of that damage. Okay, so I look at this and I don't really see, like I look at it for limited and I don't really see those, uh, the whole text box except for the vigilance. Um, so you're looking at five mana for a four, three Vigi. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's a it's a serviceable guy. Four three vigilance for, for five. Uh, it's it's not an early pick by any means, and you're not like super stoked to get the Jeru. Yeah, n no. Um, and it's legendary, which is kind of a drawback. <laughs> um, yeah, no. no. Where, where this really shines is, uh, I mean, if if you have a planeswalker, sure, this is a second copy of if you're a planeswalker. Great, good job. Um, this really shines in things like Atraxa in Commander. This is going to be amazing for that super friends build. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> yeah, just protecting all your planeswalkers and going searching up one. Absolutely. And the very first one you get is always Venser, because then you bounce this guy and get another planeswalker and keep going. It's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. sick. <laughs> uh, that's really cool. Um, so that's you, can't, you can't get Summit, though, and he's like Summit's right-hand man, so there's a bit of a flavor fail there. Yeah, uh, in a Traxxer, sure. You in a Traxxer, yeah. yeah. You know, they'll have to have five color planeswalkers instead of four, you know. <laughs> right, you got to do it right. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so Jiro, I mean, you're going to play him in your white decks as a five drop, but you're not going to be too super stoked about it. Yeah, I'll play it, but I'm not excited at all by it. Uh, he's also having Jiro's Renunciation. Uh, so he's just, like, shoving two dudes over. Cool. Uh, so one and a white instant to tap two target creatures. Up to two target creatures. And it has cycling. Eh. Yeah. I don't like this card very much. Uh, I'm not going to be playing it. I, it's going to get me. I can see it. like Because I even got uh, have been getting uh, that blue one from Armanket that taps two guys and, and they, don't, uh, they don't untap. Yeah, People are getting me with that. Yeah, they're getting me with that. And that's annoying because I know it's a bad card. Um, and I'm going to get... <laughs> got with this too i just know it so uh, i feel like this one's a little bit more playable because of the cycling like it, it's going to be a, it's a swingy effect and you can use it when you don't have to sort of like cycling you don't if you don't have any way to use, leverage it you can just cycle it away but even then it's still yeah. pretty pretty average yeah you're right you're right when it when it's good it's backbreaking but it's just so few and far between when that is good all right, so yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to agree with you and, and avoid Jura's renunciation. But yeah, as you say, it, it's going to get games won. Yeah. <sighs> it's kind of... Dutiful Servants. It, <laughs> it's a 4-mana 2-5. That's so bad. That, that's yes, this one gets the, my renowning stamp of meh. <laughs> uh, I guess it's better than Pillarfield Ox. A little bit, maybe. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's a zombie, I guess. But this is just, this is just sad. Yeah, like if you absolutely need creatures or you or zombies, maybe if that's relevant. But just, it's not worth four mana for a two five in this format. You don't want to block. I mean, usually I'm not too harsh on cards like this, but it's it's so close to the two four from the last set, just the vanilla two four in white and. All they've done is up the cost and up a toughness, and the art's pretty much the same. It looks like the exact same card, so I, that just makes me feel bad. Yeah, I think they may have added an extra zombie. I don't know if the other one had two, and this is three, and that's why it's a little bit tougher. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, just avoid this card. It's boring. Moving on. Yep. Gideon's Defeat. This is one white for an instant. Exile target white creature that's attacking or blocking. If it was a Gideon, then you gain five life. Woohoo, five life. Um, okay, so this is a cycle. Uh, all the Gatewatch get defeated by Bolas, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, and all of them are really good p 
powerful spells, but they're so narrow, um, and so they're going to get restricted to the sideboard. But when you come up against the colors, you should always bring them in because they're really powerful effects and really cheap and just really good. Um, and because of that, um, even though I'm not going to put them in my main board, I'm going to pick them highly because when they do come in, they're going to be almost the best card in your deck. Absolutely. Like this is just absolute premium removal if it's in the right spot. So if you're playing against white, this is outstanding. And then we're going to say the same thing for all of this cycle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Flavor-wise, like looking forward to seeing how this goes because the Gatewatcher being defeated, like how what's going to happen? Yeah, what does Bolas want to do with them? I, it's, I haven't seen um, anything like that. Maybe we can get some clues from reading the flavor text uh, after we go through them all. Uh, let's see how that all plays out. But uh, yeah, moving right along, the Godfarer's faithful. Pillfield Ox got some life gain abilities. No, that's not the, no the other Ox, the zero four Ox from Theros. Mm -hmm. uh, so Godfarer's faithful is uh, one white for a zero four human wizard, and whenever you cast a blue, black, or red spell, you gain a life. That is pretty bad. Yeah, this is terrible. I mean. I don't see myself wanting to put this in any deck, particularly white decks. Well, white decks. You have to. That's what I mean. Like, what a white deck wants to do is swing in and attack and be aggressive, and there are there aren't very any controlling white decks. Yeah, um, it's weird. It's a weird spot to be in for this card. Now there has been some rumblings about this getting into pauper as a bit of a, a there are, you can have esper control or or something like that, um, which is a bit of a deck just helping you block well and build up your life a little bit. So okay. Could could be a good pauper card, but that's about the only place where this is going to be useful. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> I have no interest in it. Yeah. All right. See you later, Godfarer's faithful. Get out. Oh, this one's sweet. Hour of Revelation. Three white, white, white. For a sorcery, Hour of Revelation costs three less to cast if there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield. Uh, destroy all non-land permanents. Sick. Yeah, good card. So, uh, I mean, this is planet cleansing, right? But just with more text. <laughs> yeah, it's better, right? I'm I'm pretty sure this is strictly better than planet cleansing. I think I'm safe in saying that. It's usually a brave statement, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I very much agree. Um, so, commander players, get on it. Oh, every uh, every copy of Planet Cleansing has just been thrown in the bin now. It's it's worthless. <laughs> this is just better. Yeah, three mana. That's ridiculous, really. Three mana, if you think about it. Yeah. And in commander, if there aren't ten non-land permanents in play, then well, it must be turn two. Like, no one's they haven't started the game yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the the card's ridiculous. Um, in limited, three white is is pretty heavy. Like you need to be, you need to have a lot of white sources to run this card. But if your main color is white, I would never not play this. Yeah, if you can support triple white, then I think this is an excellent removal. Um, but otherwise, yeah, being able to wrath and then play a threat in particular because it will only cost three. Uh, hopefully cost three when you play it is, is pretty uh, significant yeah and because of that it's super good in 2hg this is going to be like the best card in your decks oh yeah definitely plus amazing art i can't wait to see this thing in foil it's going to be beautiful <laughs> yeah it's so sweet who who did the art uh, i can't uh, even pronounce it raymond uh, swollen raymond. yeah um did an excellent job yeah well-known magic sweet. artist he, he usually does a good job awesome yeah even the people down there you can't really see it on the card but on the background that we've got here just the people sort of worshipping the opening of the gates that it just looks sick yeah, magnificent card first pick play it it's good yeah take it yeah all right so we have a bear mummy paramount this is one white for a two two zombie and whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control it gets plus one plus one until end of turn which is That's a good. fine playable white card. Yeah, I mean it's it goes from playable in like as a grizzly bear to really good in a zombie deck. Yeah, I would say, well even it's still okay in the zombie deck as a it attacks as a three three relatively often. 
for a two drop, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fair enough. Yeah. So good card. Yeah. And we're probably just gonna keep rolling on. Yeah. Oh, well, this one's better, I think, though. Uh, a Ketra's Avenger. One and a white for three one, human warrior. Uh, you may exert a Ketra's Avenger as it attacks. When you do, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt to you, dealt to it this turn. Damn it. <sighs> well, there goes all hopes that white wasn't going to be just ridiculously aggressive and kill us all. Yeah, this is a sick con. Like, what do you do against this? You, they just attack in and you just you can't even brawl with it like even like sometimes when you get bigger you can use a combat trick to trumpet or something but you can't even do anything against this you just got to take it yeah i mean you, the best you can do is just like block and nothing happens like, it doesn't die you, well yeah i mean that's oh, i mean if you've got if they've got good blocks i mean they're probably not going into it but uh this i don't know this card just seems really really good to me and this is what I want to be playing with the 2-1 flyer that untaps, guys. So this is just yeah. swings with impunity every turn. Yeah, it's amazing. And who... I just love how she's stolen Oketra's arrow, too. Like it's just, <laughs> just gonna yoink you. You're not using this anymore, right? It's... Well, she's very angry that Oketra got bested. Uh, yes, very sad. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, Oketra's last mercy... One white white for a sorcery. Your life total becomes equal to your starting life total, and lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. So, uh, first in our cycle of the gods' sort of last things, their endings. Um, spoilers: if you haven't read the story yet, the gods are dying. Um, and Aketra's last moments. Uh, she, to, uh, she's apparently saving someone. So. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I suppose uh, all she did was for others, so she's she's a good yeah. giving god. As far as uh, actual play, though, limited. Uh, are we playing this thing? Are we, are we playing some Last Mercy? I think so. I'm a bit torn on it, to be honest. Everything that I've ever known about life gain spells like this says that you shouldn't run it. But there's got to be a point where, okay. Three mana, gain three life, you would never run it. Three mana, gain 50 life, you would definitely run it. Where's the middle ground? Like, at what point? Is, is 15 enough? If you play this when you're at five, is three mana, 15 life? Is that good enough? For just yeah. pure life gain? Yeah. Um, I, I'm thinking, like, if you're sub 10. So if you're less than 10 life, this is probably good enough because you, you're going back all the way to 20... Particularly in a race situation where white, I think, is going to be in a few racing situations. Um, just resetting the life total is going to help you win that race. Um, it, I, I think it's going to be good enough. Um, so I'm probably going to run it and, and give it a good good go. But yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you say it's best when you're under 10. If you're not under 10, is it, aren't you just in good shape? Like, And you're, you're attacking, you're trying to race. I mean, I don't know. I just don't see where this would be that bad yeah i mean i think it, it's, it's it's just that it's a that sort of a blank yet. when you're not when you're on parity or whatever it doesn't put you out on board but yeah but i mean if, if you've got this in, a, in your opening hand you're sitting there going okay i can just use my life as a resource so much i can just take damage and then i know that i'm going to go back to 20 so i think that gives you that flexibility if you've got it early you can just look at it and say i have a plan yeah I, I like it. I, I th and in 2HG, I reckon it's really good. Oh, I think you just have to play this in 2HG. Like, yeah. You go back up to 30, there's there's not a lot of coming back from that for your opponents. Yeah. The tricky part with 2HG is sometimes getting to these board stalls where out of nowhere 15 damage happens, so you might get caught out with that regard. Yeah, yeah, it is a sorcery, so I guess remember that, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, this I'm I'm feel really torn internally about this card. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and I'm not gonna sit on the fence and say play it. I, I'm I like this card and I'm gonna run with it. I think so as well. Um, I'm gonna start it because I want to see. Um, and if it doesn't work out, then I just won't play it anymore. All right. So after that, we have some overwhelming splendor. Oh, this this card is ridiculous, and a lot of fun for you especially. Uh, <laughs> eight mana, six white white, enchant player, uh, enchanted player, 
Inch creatures enchanted player controls lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Enchanted player can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities. So tell me about how much you love this card. Ah, uh, damn it. This so this this is really cool card. It's a really powerful card, and as far as playing it, it's going to be awesome. Um, but as a judge, I hate wizards right now um, because this is kind of humility targeting you. Uh, it, it's and if you've never played with humility, um, be glad because it's really awkward. Uh, basically, there's this thing called layers, and all the things that we do happen in layers. And humility is a card that has had the most judge calls ever. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. Fortunately, they've changed the wording to make it very clear that it's base power and toughness. So that will help people to understand that the creatures go down to one ones. The first thing basically that happens is it sets power and toughness to one, um, and then buffs happen to it or uh, negatives happen to it and that sort of thing. So hopefully the wording change will be helpful. But yeah judges around the world are now rereading about layers so that they can understand how to answer the questions on this call on this card <laughs> yeah uh, I kind of want to build a curse deck um, the, with uh, the bitter heart witch and the curse that looks for more curses because I want to play this and I want to play the curse that gives all your opponents creatures minus one minus one because that's just fun oh yeah <laughs> modern curses it could be awesome yeah Oh, it's probably really, really bad, but I don't care. I, w I want to try it. I might... <laughs> well, there, yeah. there is the epic deck that already has a setup like that. So there's yes. the white epic. I think it's Enduring Ideal is the card, um, and it just plays enchantments because uh, the Enduring Ideal searches for an enchantment every turn and puts it into play. So I think you could you could make that happen. It's already it already got a deck there. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, I got to get on that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and finally got a modern deck to play. Yes. I used to play Curses back in the day in Standard. It wasn't very good. No. <laughs> it's probably about as good as my Werewolf Tribal deck. Yeah, that never really got off the ground, did it? Um, uh, Overwhelming Splendor, though. First pick, I think I, I would take this and play it and try and build the deck. Me too. I think I would try and build either some sort of control build or a ramp, green ramp build. Yeah. That said, it's going to be a fun card, but not necessarily the best card. Yeah, but it'd be fun. All right. Sandblast. Sandblast is back from uh, Dragons of Tarkir, I believe. was around about then. was Tark Tarkir, Totem Era. Uh, it's an instant for three mana. Deals five damage to target attacking or blocking creature. And just lasts at impeccable timing. Yeah, it's definitely an upgrade on that. Um, this card, yeah, it's just so much better than impeccable timing. It kills, I think, just about everything in this yeah. format. Except for, like, the giant sandworms. Um, but yeah, this cut's okay, but it's it'll get the job done. It's good removal. Like it, it's not the premium removal, but you, you certainly want to pick this early uh, and and play most of them because they're going to do good work. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd be happy to run these. Yeah. All right. Good card. Saving Grace. Uh, so this is a little bit weird. This card. Yeah. Um, one in a white for an enchantment aura. It has flash can only enchant a creature you control it gives your creature plus zero plus three and when it enters the battlefield all damage that would be dealt to dealt this turn to you or permanence you control it's dealt to the creature that it's enchanting instead oh. yeah this is I, I can see this is going to be blowouts every time it's cast one way or the other yeah um so you think about it, it's combat, you play it on a guy, you line up your blocks so that you eat all the guys or we're going to trade with them, and then you lose your guy and they lose like half their board. Yeah. Or you line up your blocks, you flash this in on your guy, and in response they kill it and completely blow you out because you thought it was all going to work out and then it doesn't. Yeah, we don't think about those times, <laughs> Brett. <laughs> No, but yeah, I mean, it's an aura, so it's going to be swingy. Yeah. Um, I guess <sighs> Real one swingy. piece of advice, if you are playing this card, play it before blocks. Like, after they declare attackers, cast Saving Grace, because you want to know if it's going to stick or not. Because you want it to be on the creature, giving it that buff of plus O plus 3, so that when you line up your blocks, you know that it's already in play. 
you don't want to line up the blocks first and then see whether or not this works. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, there's always that catch-22 with whether you do it before or after blocks because you want that extra creature to be able to block regardless of whether or not it's going to die or not kind of thing. But yes, yes. Yeah, uh, you awesome. have to be careful. You have to be careful with the open mana. Yeah, yeah really interesting card. Uh, so as far as play, are you going to play this? Are you going to have a go at this one? Look, I think so. Just because it's going to... Uh, it's just really swinging. I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I can get a lot of value out of this card if I play it right. But it's, it's one of those weird things. That it's not a removal spell. It's not really a combat trick. It kind of is. But then you know one of your guys is dying. Like, you're not always... Like, do you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's, an, it's an awkward one. I think I will try and run it in my in a couple of my white decks and see how it goes. Like, it's an uncommon. It's it's got to be good, right? I think it's going to be good. Um, I don't want more than one. I think this is a, a one of type effect. But when you get it to work, it's going to pretty much swing a game. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna say go for it. Play this card. It, it's going to be good. <laughs> I'm pro. I'm positive. Okay. All right. I'll I'll jump on that. <laughs> All right, so now we have a Solemnity. This is three and a white for an enchantment. Players can't get counters, and counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. Uh, so this, for limited, just don't want to play it. I don't think you, you play this card. No, I don't think so either. It's probably It could be sideboard against the Black Demon. Mm -hmm. Maybe, if they've got it, uh, you could bring it out of the board. That's okay, I guess. I guess if they're playing a few... In black, a lot of the removal is Neg 1, Neg 1. So you got your Splendid... Um, splendid Agony. Agony, that's it. Splendid Agony. And a couple more in this set that we're going to see in black that are yeah. Neg 1, Neg 1 counter-based. So maybe you want to bring it in if they have a lot of that. But Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an awkward one. Um, it turns off some removal too. There's a, a removal that is uh, Painful Sting which is you need to put a counter on one of your own creatures in order to then destroy a creature, which you're not allowed to do if Solemnity is in play. Wow. So it just turns off that removal spell. Yeah. Because it's an you additional cost. Pass. You have to have to do it. If you have a Vizier, that's a different story. You're, you're allowed to do it. It just reduces it to nothing. But Solemnity just says you're not allowed to do it at all. Ah, uh, okay, yep. Yeah. And because it's a cost and not a part of the ability. Yeah, okay. Wow, that, that's good to know going in. Um, having said that, this probably isn't seeing main board play. No, not main board play and barely sideboard play. Like this, get this on the wheel. If anything, it's it's not not a really good card for. Yeah, one of those rares you don't want to open in draft. Yeah, for sure. Um, there are some interesting constructed applications. Certainly for modern, uh, this goes into your Malira type decks where you have infinite combos with uh, murderous red cap or kitchen finks gaining infinite life or dealing infinite damage so this is a lot of fun there where they just keep coming back persisting again and again um yeah just keeps coming back uh, infinite that's pretty cool um this um also combos with the phyrexian unlife right that uh, enchantment that when you would go to zero you get infect damage uh, yeah, that, sh that should work. Um, I think Phyrexian Life is if you would lose life after zero, you just get poison counters, is that right? Yeah, and you don't lose the game for having zero life or something like that. Yeah, so that, that should work. Um, you'd be able to, to have these two in play, and until one of them gets removed, you can't lose by damage. Yeah. Okay, sweet, sweet combo. So we'll see if this makes some waves in modern then, because it could be an interesting card over there. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people talking about it. Hopefully it does something, yeah. All right, uh, so the <laughs> loneliest camel. Yeah, the last one. Uh, two and a white for three two camel, and it has lifelink as long as you control a desert or there's a desert in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. So stats wise, it's fine, and if you got a desert, it turns into a pretty good card, really. Yeah, three two lifelink seems pretty good. You'd, you'd certainly play that. Yeah. Um, not much to say about this card. Uh, there are a few desert cards matters, like if it's either on the battlefield or in your graveyard. Uh, that's across all the colors, I think. So something to keep an eye out for. Yeah, I, having a look, I don't think having a desert is going to be 
too crazy difficult. I think most decks are going to be able to run a couple of deserts. Um, there's a common cycle for the colors, there's an uncommon cycle, and there's a couple of rares here and there, so... Yeah, I mean, I don't think it should be too hard, and I think the uncommon cycle has got some pretty good abilities on them, so that that's actually really good. And, and I, I really like um, that if it's in your graveyard, you still get it, so it doesn't dissuade you from actually cycling them or, you know, yeah. doing the thing. Or in uh, Armanket, ones using their abilities um yeah i think this is going to be the cool cycle yeah I, I do think it should be legendary though this, this should be a legendary camel <laughs> because there's only one you're only allowed to have one it's solitary <laughs> yeah yeah in uh flavor drafts you can't have two of these on the field at the same time that's just not right yeah, not allowed no. all right uh next is the steadfast sentinel it's a four mana two three with vigilance which is pretty poor to be honest pretty mediocre uh, it also yeah. has eternalize for six so four white white to bring it back as a four four with vigilance i definitely like four four vigi better i mean obviously but i mean this is kind of bland um yeah four mana for the front face at a two three it's so it's much isn't it yeah again if you need a card <laughs> like this is a fine card but yeah, it's yeah. killer. It's it's yeah. Just with how aggressive white is, I can't imagine them wanting this card in their deck. No. Yeah. So avoid if possible. This less so. This is good. Yeah. Uh, Steward of Solidarity is one in a white for a two-two human warrior, and tap and exert, create a one-one white warrior creature token with vigilance. It's got sweet, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a bear with upside, so can't go too wrong there yeah i mean i like how they're exerting on abilities now and not just on attacking so that's kind of cool um they can do some really cool stuff with that i mean we saw that with the angel but um this as well i think this is good and another good target for your um for your avon oh, yeah, you just definitely. make one mm -hmm. just make one ones every turn it's sweet yeah, that's great. And, I mean, obviously anything that says Exert on it is going to be great with the Aven, but things like this where you're getting an extra creature each time, excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, good little bear. And uh, we can see there's quite a few aggressive white tutus, so you're going you're gonna to need your own two-mana uh, two players, otherwise you're going to get run over pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, white's aggressive again, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, got a couple more. The next one is a Sun Scourge Champion. Two and a white for a two three. So uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to its power, and you can eternalize it for four and discard a card. So adding this discard clause, which means you bring it back as a four four and gain four life. Yeah, when I first looked at this, I thought, man, discarding a card that's not that great. But you've all you've already got the value out of the two three. Uh, a two three that gains you two life when it enters is fine, and then you just treat your discarded card as a four four for four that gains you four life when it enters and that then I just think about it and that's sweet yeah when you can turn like your extra land into a four four gain four life that's just going to be great so. yeah and this is really cheap too like four mana to eternalize mm. that's that's really good yeah this is this is a scary card i think and, and as a four mana four four like you just don't get that sort of stats out in most of the time yeah so you'd be really aggressively trading this off. Oh yeah, and I mean, I, I like first pick. Is this first pickable card? <sighs> I don't After know. I don't maybe decent so. removal. Uh, it's good. I don't know. If it's that high up. Maybe I'm that looking good. maybe third or fourth pick. I, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm overestimating how good things are. But um, yeah, I don't think it's that high. All right, well, I'm pretty psyched for this, so um, I'm going to be picking it pretty early. Maybe not absolutely first, but certainly in those first three picks, is this should, should be gone. Yeah, I can, I can see that, yeah. All right. The unconventional tactics. What does this thing do? Looks weird. This is, yeah, this is weird. Uh, unconventional tactics, tactics is two and a white for a sorcery, and target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains flying until end of turn. And whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay white. If you do, return unconventional tactics from your graveyard to your hand. So three mana to leap your guy up and swing, mm -hmm. and then you can get it back. Like this is, this seems pretty good in a zombie deck. Like just recurring it. Um, I know you like it a lot. 
Yeah, I think, I think this is awesome. I think uh, when I when I first read it, I didn't see the target creature. I was thought it was more like the uh, an, an overrun type effect um, that could come back. But even just targeting one creature, I think it's really quite a powerful effect. I mean, you jump a guy, get in for a bunch of damage, play a zombie, get it back, and there are enough zombies going around that you're going to be able to get this back a couple of times. So, repeatable, it's a lot of value. So, I think I'm picking this very highly. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'm a, not as high on it as you. I think it's quite powerful, especially in a zombie deck, but I think I think I want to be in a zombie deck first. That's just me, but I'll see. I I can. I'm quite happily, uh, quite happy to be proven wrong. Hmm. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to some unconventional tactics. <laughs> Big zombies. Yeah. All right, and our last one, the Vizier of the True. This thing is a bomb. Uh, three and a white for a human cleric. Three two. Uh, you may exert it as it attacks, and whenever you exert a creature, any creature, tap target creature in opponent controls. <laughs> This card's dumb. This card's so dumb. I When I first saw this, I thought it was just a 3-2, and when it itself exerts, tap a creature and opponent controls, and I thought that was excellent. Whenever any creature you control exerts, mm -hmm. that is just unreal. Like, you could just take out a team and just swing through. Absolutely. It's just absurd card. <laughs> I mean, and if we just go back, you play this guy, we go back to uh, our friend over here, you can do that on your opponent's turn. Exert this guy, make a 1-1, one, one, tap one of their creatures, untap, uh, go. <laughs> sick! <laughs> it's going to be huge. Like uh, I think this is amazing uh, as far as a card in, in white, and uh, I'm going to be picking... Uh, the, pro this is probably a first pick. Oh, for sure. I think this is going to be right up there with one of the best... Uh, if not the best I've seen so far um, yeah I'm, I'm going to call it so far out of the, it's definitely the best white uncommon and it might just be the best uncommon in the set card's absurd yeah I'm just thinking through are there any other uncommons I mean Desert's Hold is the only one that's close and even then I think I'd probably take the Vizier of the True oh for sure yeah. so Vizier of the True last white card and best light uncommon yeah this card great bonkers. All right, uh, so that should be it. That's uh, all of our white cards. Uh, got through those, so we're looking at some very aggressive white decks here again, Anthony. Yeah, white looks really good again and really aggressive, so I guess I'm going to have to play more aggressive decks this format. Uh, well, that's <sighs> the, the way it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining us for the white set review. We'll be back shortly with all of the blue cards, so tune in then. Yeah, blue cards. I'll see you then.